surface level, everything else isn't. So it's not really like this, it's really more like this. And uh, I'd love to say that it's wonderfully and sunny and not lashing it down. <laughs> but apparently um, there's a no um, take zone, so there's no fishing round here. Which um, basically it's um, a marine conservation area. And I think that's a great idea. Anything to uh, increase um, our sea's diversity is a good idea in our books. We were definitely not seeing lamb lash at its best. On a sunny day, it must look glorious, but this was not that day. Oh, well, I'm glad to say it stopped lashing it down. And we can actually see Holy Island now, which is holy because of a um, martyr who died in a cave. Um, we've also got a, um, a marine preservation area here, and um, we can actually see a bit further than um, earlier, because earlier we couldn't see much at all, but we can at least see Holy Island now! Oh, and they have brilliant ice cream! So somewhere about here is a cave where Saint, I forget his name, begins with an M, Saint somebody, um, deliberately contracted 30, 30 different diseases and then died in his cave in 639. So. This really is Anthrax Island over there. <laughs> Little aside, um, I'm having to clean the fridge out because it's uh, defrosted and I have water in the bottom. And this is what fits in the bottom section of the fridge. The top section hasn't been emptied yet. The sound you're hearing at the moment is the sound of the engine because um, the only way when we're on either anchor or mooring uh, to charge the house batteries is to use the engine. If we're going to live on Salty Lass, which we are doing, um, you know, and continue to live on Salty Lass, that has got to change. While Beverly's uh, preparing uh, food, I'm going to be doing, um, uh, I'm going to be putting the dry mat down. Uh, we had some dry mat spare from um, sorting out the V-Birth and what we're going to use uh, the dry mat for is to put it at the bottom of our um, seats, on, underneath our seats and that will just keep the um, dry mat off the, um, off the bottom and that's especially going to be good for my splicing bag which is literally is just in a bag um, and that gets, um, it just means it's not going to get damp. Yeah, we don't get a lot of moisture under there since we insulated, but... Yeah, but it does, does get a little bit and just let's keep it off. The insulation's um, reduced the damp, hasn't it? We used to have puddles in there oh, and now yeah. we've got, now, now we got like a film of moisture. Yeah, it's film moisture, but it still gets my um, uh, splicing bag, it, it, it still gets my splicing bag damp. So um, by putting the um, dry mat in at the bottom, I'll get rid of that. So I might as well repurpose. All right, no need to shout. So I'll repurpose um, the dry matting that we don't that we did we have left over. Now, there's the job done, and I will be the first to agree with you. It is not cut to perfection, but the whole purpose of this is just to keep um, my uh, stuff that I have stored here off the bottom of the locker, and um, and not to waste um, my dry mat. So from that point of view, I have achieved the objective. While I've got the um, uh, chair up, I thought I'd just share with you a solution um, that I've made. We have a, a rather large bunk, um, which is great for when you need a large bunk, um, but we've wasted all that storage behind it. So all I've done is um, 
I've uh, got thermal bags so that it keeps things dry. Um, I've put wonderful little um, labels on them. So this means it's B for my bedding. So I've got blankets and my spare bedding in there. Um, and because it's in the thermal bag, it just keeps everything warm. And if we need a bigger bunk, I can take them out. And uh, But I've still got storage. So it's just a solution I thought I'd share. Well, as you can see, you can see for miles. Except we want to go that direction, where you can't really see for miles. Because um, what I was seeing was water on the lens. So plan B is to, when we get to about here, we'll call Campbelltown on the radio and ask them about conditions. And if conditions are pretty terrible when we're about here, we'll simply turn around and come back in through this and go back onto the mirroring ball. It'll be a bit of a trip out, but at least we have a backup plan. Always have a backup plan. <laughs> it's very difficult to judge if you can see the, the sea state. Whereas, yeah, definitely some um, choppy waves and stuff. Once we turned west, we were able to go close hauled at last. It's been too long on this particular passage, but at last, that blissful sound that I enjoy, known as the sails are up and we're finally sailing. No engine giving us motor sailing, no. We like just sailing. Well, we finally used our uh, boom brake in um, anger. And um, there's definitely a couple of things we didn't think about. First of all, um, it's no good for uh, single handing because um, you need to go forward to sort out the lines. Um, and um, it's always good to have somebody keeping an eye on you while you're doing that. Uh, the fact that you have to go forward on the windward side. Leeward side. Leeward, sorry. The fact that you have to go forward on the leeward side is um, another safety issue to go forward and think about. But um, we are using it, um, it is doing the job and um, we've uh, already done a video about it so <laughs> if you want to watch that you can have a look at that somewhere else. Uh, but anyway we'll see, we've got it in operation now. In spite of the fog and mist doing its best to hide Campbelltown, we found the entrance channel and proceeded in. Just that is the shape of the green cone. Right. And now we're going to just go to the other side. And that is the shape of the red cam. And to be honest, it's not really sufficient. Just behind there you've got a special marker as well, but you know, it's just not can-like enough. Should be more upright. More canny. This particular mooring is a little bit on what I call overkill. So um, it's got there and then it's got comes back. And as you can see it's got two ropes on. Uh, but this one doesn't have any buoys on it at all. So it meant that um, that was just trailing. Um, this one's got two on, uh, but the problem is the rope is so heavy um, that I actually found it difficult to get onto the um, onto the balls because the blue line was just being dragged around by the uh, dark line. So it was a little bit overkill, uh, but at least this one had something on, 
whereas the other ones, uh, the other moorings here at um, Campbelltown don't seem to have anything particular to watch at all. Well, this is Campbelltown and we have bobbed into it to top up with water, get rid of rubbish and uh, pay a mooring ball fee because we took a mooring ball last night. And the other thing we're getting is some diesel, which we've got in this jerry can. And um, I've already put some fuel conditioner into it, some fuel set. I'll show you that in a moment. This is our jiggy hose, our self-priming siphon. It has a brass fitting with a metal ball at the end. The other end goes into the tank. And if you don't have one of these when you live a boat or sailboat or a motorboat, well, I think you're missing out because look at this. And off it goes. Ah, oh, doesn't that look a quaint little picture house? Uh, this is all I can show you of Campbelltown because I'm afraid to say I'm on a mission and I'm on a mission is to cross to Ireland. Well, I finished my cup of tea and the job is done. All I've got to do now is take this end out, put a rag around the end of it and lift it up and I won't spill a drop. I can then coil all this away and wait for next time. And this goes back in storage under the V-berth.